Hello everyone and welcome to episode 9 of Podcast The Five Rings, your source of enlightenment in the realm of video games, tabletop, anime, film, and tech. Each episode of Podcast The Five Rings releases Monday mornings on iTunes and SoundCloud. Now topic by topic, day by day on YouTube, with the full video releasing on Friday. To catch updates about the podcast or for other news, give us a follow on your social media platform of choice listed in the description below. I'm your host, GM, and overseer of Podcast The Five Rings, Obsidian, joined today by the wall that will not fall, Tetsuo. How's everyone doing? Mr. Airborne Sniffles. Yep. Apparently, an Oni can't crush the wall, but the common cold. <laughs> yeah. It's all the Shadowlands silly, need silly. to do. Just spread airborne viruses. Yep. The resident wildcard now. Uh, hello. I'm just here sitting in no AC. Like I said, man, you and me both. Pretty unbearable. And I will gladly take the cold over the... <laughs> Dude, for real, any time. Like, I... Straight up, I hate spring and summer. Well, I meant, I meant cold as a sickness cold, but that too. What is best season? I used to like winter more, but now I lean more towards fall. Yeah, fall, man. Yeah. Well, you guys don't really have seasons, so... True. It, it doesn't matter for you. It's like a different one every, every time here. And not joined today... By the Dark Fortune Duelist meta, he had an uh, issue come up, and he is not able to attend this week. He should be back next week, though. So, what have you guys been doing this week, other than being sick on your grand tests? Um, the real answer is playing with more gunpla, but beyond that, not really much. What about you, Mal? Oh, just video games, and then I also blame Tets. Because I've been building Gumpla every here and there. <laughs> it must be a Florida thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I've just never been big on on models and stuff like that. I mean, I guess I never got into war games either, really. So that probably didn't like help me push me in that hobby direction. But yeah. I just like to zone out and just do something with my hands. What's something to do while you're watching stuff on TV or whatever? Yeah. yeah. I don't want a podcast or <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of stuff. We're trying to finish our game. I've been riding a little bit. I've been catching up on Tales of Brazaria, which I've been enjoying. The game has picked up a little bit in what seems like the second act of it, so I'm I'm a little bit m- more high on it than I was initially. After Mal clears his like backlog of immediate games, he could maybe get to that eventually since he bought it while it was on sale. Who knows? Yeah, maybe. You too can play as a cute werewolf chick and be a demon and stuff. <laughs> On that note, let's get to our first topic, which is the L5R stream and the new Bonsai article. Earlier today on Facebook, FFG had a semi-live stream, a Facebook Live video feed that they did. This stream they had actually had a lot more details in it than the new article did. The article is more just kind of like a sample conflict phase between this one involves a military one. So we'll talk about the stream first. As more of the juicy deets. So the first thing they said was that L5R LCG is a two-player game. <laughs> they specifically said two-player, no multiplayer, at least in the core Which, set. When someone asked them directly, they said, we can't talk about it yet. Yeah, if that'll ever come up. But it really sounds like it's just something they have for later plans. Yeah. I'd imagine some kind of set similar to the... Um... Uh, siege stuff that came out towards the end of uh, AEG's run. Yeah, and Clan Wars. Yeah. What, what I liked about those is that it was co-op, and there was obviously the actual multiplayer, like two versus two. Yeah. L five R two. I mean, apparently people like it because people ask for it all the time. I wasn't a big fan because you know I played Honor. If you played Honor in that format, you usually got ganged up on by everyone. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how multiplayer would work with this new Honor card uh, draw stuff. Yeah, that's probably why they, they're they probably just R&Ding it and seeing if they can even, even make it feasible with the new rules, is what right. I'm assuming. Yeah, who knows? Maybe they'll have, for the first expansion set, like the bigger box, they'll have uh, some rules for it by then, but that's probably not. They did, well, they did mention that they're already well into the first expansion. That means they got the first couple of packs done, then. Possibly. I mean, yeah. If they got to do one a month, they're going to be on that. Yeah, we... Those would obviously have to be done by now. Because you have, with FFG, you have the little packs that are like 15 or 20 cards. 
those are ones that oh, come yeah. out every month. And then I think like oh, two more times. Yeah, and then like two more times a year, you'll have the big box of like a hundred more cards or something like that. Yeah, and that's probably when they'll add Shadowlands or yeah, Man- they did Mantis the, if they do uh, Mantis. Uh, they could they could introduce new factions factions uh, that in during that time way back when. Yeah, yeah. And I, I bet if they keep with the kind of bare bones skeleton of the the Clan War area and Scorpion Coup, it'll be Shadowlands. They've really avoided kind of talk about the Manus and some of the minor clans. Yeah. Well, but they've also so far managed to avoid talking about a lot of the lore just in general. So yeah. They, yeah, another thing they mentioned in the stream was that all prior AEG fiction or lore is not canon, which, because the question was mainly targeted towards what happened before the Scorpion coup, if yeah. any of that was still canon. They said they will draw from it if necessary, but it, no, no, nothing's canon now. <laughs> yep, so the so, history is going to be completely different as we know it. Yeah, could be. Could yeah, be yeah, it could be. Pretty similar to. They said to overanalyze the fictions. Yeah, speaking of the fictions, we're getting our first one next week, too. Oh, yeah? Which I'm excited about. Is it Crab? No. no we don't know. That's the clan and focus. I... We'll get to that in a little bit, but... Oh, I yeah. thought the clan focus was the fictions. Nope. They're... No. Well, they might oh. do fictions with that, too. I mean, right. who knows? But they just said that the first fictions are going to come out next week. Right. I misunderstood. Um, then... <laughs> I mean, I guess sort of fiction-y related or lore related. They said that there are plenty of other places outside of Rokugan that they would, they could potentially explore at a later date. Oh, uh, I hope they don't. <laughs> we already kind of talked about the lands outside of Rokugan a little yeah. bit on our dislikes topic. Well, well so I, I will addendum that by saying if they, if the other lands are still heavily Asian inspired, I'm okay with that. China versus Japan type deal. I'd be I cool know. with that. But I don't really want to see more Arabian knights and Indian I'm fine if there's kingdoms. like a I'm fine if there's a few personalities and stuff. I just don't want like a, yeah. a story arc focus on it again really. Exactly. At least not right now. Since we, well, yeah, they we just later. got that. I, I imagine at some point they're going to want to do something rad- more radically different. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if they want to focus as much on that diversity as they even, did. Say. Many years away. Yeah. Yep. All right. I'm sure it'll still always be true that you can always pick and choose. So. Yeah, the core set should always be legal. So. Yeah, it's gonna have. There'll probably get cards that get eroded or banned or stuff. I'm sure, but they'll have that base like evergreen is I think the word they use. Uh, another mechanic they kind of explained a little bit was influence. Your stronghold has a certain amount of influence, and cards have the little scroll with the number on them that you can include in the deck. So I think I saw one of the strongholds had 10, so that means you'd be able to put up to 10 influence worth yeah, of... Yeah, I think we've seen, uh, like, 1 to 3 influence on cards. Yeah. So th- those are only involved with your conflict deck, and the way they described it was the uh, Dynasty deck, basically, it represents more of your the pure what your clan is. It's like big personalities, it's holdings, that stuff. The conflict deck, again, is kind of like your tricks... You can put your like out the conflict out of clan personalities or what are going to go in the conflict deck and say your dynasty deck was which is how it used to be since all personalities in the in the CCG were relegated to the dynasty deck. It kind of represents you having like a secret alliance that your opponent didn't know about. And I kind of think that fits well with the theme they're going for of the whole conflict deck being the tricks up your sleeve kind of thing. Yeah, they also <laughs> pointedly mentioned that it's a uh, one clan you're aligning with. So it sounds like you might only be able to choose one clan and choose to include personalities from that, not all of them. Yeah, they'll have to elaborate on that a little bit in the future. Looking forward to seeing how that might work with my Pinsir Alliance. Crab and Scorpion forever, huh? Yep. Okay, they also said that the first storyline prize is going to be at Gen Con. I don't think that's really a big surprise to anyone. It was just an actual confirmation that we got. Yeah, they they sounded pretty excited, and they said they will reveal what it actually is closer to Gen Con. Yep. So we'll have to wait and see on that. Uh, we also got more details about characters with dashes for a skill. Basically, if there's a way for your character who has a dash to get involved in a conflict that they have the dash in, like say I have the Matsu Berserker, and somehow my opponent tries to harpoon the Matsu Berserker in the battle, the character immediately bows and gets sent home. 
So they just can't participate, which yeah. that still might be a viable strategy for to use against your opponent. Say yep. that you politically attack them first, you harpoon in the Matsu Berserker, it bows and sends home, so then it can't declare for any military conflicts. Yeah, I was going to say it's another way to bow your uh, opponent's guys. That's what I like about it, is the kind of strategy that you can use in that way, more so than, you know, just obviously they can't assign. Well, it's like they can assign, but this just happens, and it becomes another way for you to interact with your opponent so i don't know that was that was really neat and it just kind of answers the question that people had about those characters somehow getting involved in the battles i'm guessing yep. that they're not going to be able to add skill from attachments either like if probably you, not like it yeah because the way they described it was this character just wasn't trained how to fight basically so if you give them a sword they're not going to know how to use it yep they also talked about mulligans uh this was something they were kind of unclear on in their description Obviously, you can discard cards out of your dynasty, just like the old game, and refill them face down. But in the first turn in the old game, you could do it and flip them back face up, but only on the first turn. And you would do that during your limited phase instead of at the end of the turn. You can also do this with cards in your hand, which is similar to the starting holdings you had in Emperor Edition. I believe there's Bamboo Harvesters. I think the experience version let you put three cards back and draw three more or something like that. So you could kind of mulligan part of your hand. They didn't explain if this was all only on the first turn. I don't see how it couldn't be. <laughs> if if it's not, being able to get rid of your cards constantly is going to be really good. I think mulligans usually only refer to the first hand. Yeah. I would hope so, at least for that. Because otherwise, I'm just never going to bid honor, and I'm just going to keep mulliganing away the stuff yeah. that I don't need. Yeah, there's no way they'll do that. I yeah. Think. Yeah, they, they, they can't. Okay, we also, they elaborate a little bit more on fate. A, a, an engine, an economic engine for your deck. There's not a way to directly impact your per turn production. Basically, all you get is what's on your stronghold every turn. However, there are ways, like action cards or certain personalities or stuff you get into play, will have ways to manipulate fate. So there's obviously the, if you pass first, you get the additional fate for next turn. There's the fate on the unclaimed rings. Yep, and there's going to be a way to put additional fate on your characters that are already in play or attachments, things like that. So that's basically going to be the quote-unquote economy of the game, kind of. You're always going to have your base thing, so you never have to worry about getting gold screwed like the old game or gold flooded. Yeah, I'm still I'm curious to see if all of them will have the same starting fate or not because I think we've only seen the two strongholds and they had the same seven fate, I think. I think all we've seen so far is Crane and Lion. Yeah. I bet once they start rolling out these clan previews, that's when we're going to see probably the Stronghold, maybe the clan champions. So. Oh, yeah. Then obviously talk about the lore around some of the personalities and all that good stuff. So I don't know. I think that's pretty interesting. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to let everybody actually play a game of L5R. And especially right, in yeah. old L5R where it w there wasn't best two out of three. If you got gold screwed, you got gold screwed and you just lost for the round. Because the games took so long. Yeah, that's pretty rough. And I think all the FFG stuff in tournaments are two out of three, no matter what. So, good. So yeah, it just keeps... It, make, it makes it to where everybody can have fun and play the game. So I'm all yep. for it. I, I like it. You have to be a little bit more tactical with how you want to manipulate your fate. All right, we already talked about the first fiction coming out next week. Uh, they also said that there'll be a combination of stuff we get in the product, telling a story, and that's going to complement the stuff that we get online. So it's still going to have online fictions. Basically, same old L5R. We just don't know the exact volume yet. Something else they talked about was that bowed cards still get to use their ability. Obviously, if the cost of performing the action is bowing the character, you can't bow them if they're already bowed. But this is a, a big departure from the old game and probably one that people are going to have to get a little bit used to. It makes cards a lot more powerful. It makes bowing, obviously, a lot less powerful. Basically, all it's going to do now is keep your opponent from adding skill or signing yeah. to battlefields. Unless it, their action has a the, that has to be bowed as part of it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. So if you have oh, to yeah, bow to pay yeah. a cost, then you can't do it, obviously, right, if you're right, bowed right. already. So yeah, that I've already seen people say they don't like it on forums. Well, I mean, that's going to that's gonna happen. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess we'll have to see the power level, really, come, how it comes across. Yeah. Uh, obviously, broken provinces cannot be reattacked. I think everyone assumed that, that they just clarified it. Someone asked it. Right. 
you can't stall the game out by going yeah. after the same province over and over. They want again. the game to keep progressing. <laughs> yeah. There's no limit to the amount of fate you can invest on one card. The only limit you have is how much fate you have available. So if you want to spend all your seven fate on the first turn on one guy. Yeah, I doubt that will be optimal. No, nah, probably not. <laughs> the guy's going to get <laughs> discarded and you're going to be sad. You're also going to want to defend against all these multiple conflicts. And having one guy is not really going to help you. But there <laughs> might be times where you want to. So just something that they clarified on. Rings are either contested, unclaimed, or claimed. Those are the three phases of rings. Obviously, we're going to have card abilities that react, react off what phase the ring is. They just clarified that. Abilities can happen away from conflict, but most will have some kind of exception to the wording that requires them to be present. Most of the Bushi and Courtier that you're going to attack provinces with, they'll say something like, at this battlefield's province, or a character in this battle or something like that. But they also said that Shugenja are going to have less and less of that restriction. So they're going to have more of the home battle kind of actions. Yeah, they wanted that to show off the magic of the Shugenja, that they can uh, influence it from far away. I'm telling you, man, they just want me to play Phoenix. <laughs> they just keep pushing me in that direction. I mean, it's going to be interactive, obviously. You're going to manipulate the way the battlefield happens, but just there's a lot less cost if you can keep your guy at home, not have to send him, then have the personality bow. And then, so you could use this ability to affect one battlefield, and then when your opponent attacks you politically or you want a military swing, they'll still be available to do that. So it keeps, it's basically like a play it safe kind of thing. And it just screams defensive, so. I like that a lot. <laughs> uh, we already kind of talked about the clan spotlights. They said they're going to do one every other week. Craner first. No alphabetical order. Suck it, crab. Grab a rob. Rob. Clickety clack. Watch, I bet they'll do scorpion next after that. No. Ah, I'm okay with that. I would actually like to see not lion and crane first, just so we can see more of the stuff from the other clans. We're already getting crane first. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying, like, hypothetically. I'd want to see unicorn first, actually, because we've seen the less of what they can do. No, I, I agree with that, but they also want to show off more traditional clans for newbies. Yeah. New players. Fair enough. I mean, I understand it. I'm more saying, I guess, like, holistically, I would rather see... Yeah. See them, just since we've seen more of the other stuff. I mean, it's every other week, so... Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be recent. We're not gonna have to wait that long. I'm surprised they're doing it so fast. I think we talked about it last week or the week before, that, or at least I said, I think that... I thought yeah. it was gonna be closer to Gen Con. I thought it was gonna come sooner than later, because it's yeah. such a big part of the ser uh, you know... What clan are you? Yep, and they apparently agree with you, Mal, so... Because I am correct. Chalk one up to you. The biggest thing they kind of talked about was dueling. So, here's how dueling is going to work now. Cards are going to initiate duels. That's really no different. You're probably going to have personalities that have an effect that creates a duel. Uh, conflict cards in your hand. Maybe events and stuff that come out of your dynasty deck. So, you're going to start a duel. Duel between two personalities. Duels are either going to be military or political. Your dueling stat is whatever skill the duel revolves around. Instead of having a focus pool of cards from your hand or from your conflict deck, and there being a focus value involved on each card, a kind of a more complicated mechanic in the old game, you're now just going to bid with your honor dial, and you're going to add whatever number you bid to your dueling skill. The higher total wins. If you bid lower than your opponent, then you get to take honor away from them equal to the difference. Yeah, it's, it's like the draw mechanic. But you, ha you have to win to take the um, honor, correct? No. No, you don't necessarily have to win. Oh, it's okay. Just so, whoever bids the lower gets the higher for that part. So if you bid one, he bids four. Even if you win or lose, you get three honor. Yeah. And you take it from your opponent, which is also big. So they, they said it's basically kind of you use your tricks to get yeah, ahead so of the duel. I saw someone um, on the forum mention that it's um, when you, like someone with less skill has to be more dishonorable to win because if you have a higher skill total, you don't need to sacrifice as much honor. Obviously, right? You don't even have to, like if a level you know if someone with six skill fights a level one person, they don't have to they sacrifice any like the uh, level yeah. one guy is gonna have to like be pretty dishonorable to beat that guy. Yeah, and I, I was saying this in chat earlier. I think if you're honor and you're dueling, so praying, 
more than likely. You're going to be bully doing people. If you're like a four political skill, you're going to want to find people with ones. Those are going to be the people you challenge. You want to kind of bid low. So then you don't even really care necessarily about losing. Unless like the we'll effects are really the good. Cards. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have to see the cards, obviously. But, I mean, this is all hypothetical. But if you care about honor, you're obviously going to want to bid lower and use your characters with more high skill to compensate. So then your opponent has to choose, do I want them to gain the honor and go for the win, or right. do I just yeah, want to I, give them the win? I'm kind of liking the uh, honor um, betting stuff for like the mind game stuff that can go on. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's fun. It's good that they incorporate it all together, because again, it just makes the game simpler. Right, and cut can, down on that time. It's easier to design. There's less of a learning curve for newer people. That's... Anytime I see something new and they're talking about the way they've condensed the game, I think they're really their goal is just to obviously get rid of the snowball, cut down big on the learning curve, and make it more easier for everyone to understand. There's not all these random mechanics. Cards don't have yeah. like four or five numbers on them that I have to know what every one of them does. My card like has, you said before, it you could only play one game before. Now, like best two out of three is a big improvement. I like it. I want to see some dual cards. We might see some uh, when the crane stuff previews. Maybe we'll have to wait till Dragon. Quite likely. <laughs> yeah. I, someone asked which is better, Kakita or Miramoto. Uh, yeah. They wouldn't answer. What did they say? Yeah. No, nope. said you'll have to find out for yourself in playing. Wah, wah. Just tell us <laughs> your bosses. Uh, they also said that they're going to have lots of tourneys and panels at Gym Con, so you can go up and talk to Katrina or I can't remember the guys who actually designed the game's name. They said they'll be around. You can come up and ask some questions. They're all, they're going to have a pre-release tourney, obviously. They'll probably have an actual like last day event or Saturday event that'll be probably the big storyline mm-hmm. thing, I imagine. Yeah, I wish I could go to Gen Con. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to have fun for the both of you. Yep. That was the big stuff out of the stream. We're going to move on to the article, which was titled Bonsai. So the Bonsai article gave us an example of conflict between a dragon and Phoenix player. Kind of had to, other than getting like some new cards and stuff, the article didn't really give us a whole lot of meat to chew on. Your province is going to reveal as soon as the attacker is assigned to the province. You don't know beforehand what the province strength you're going up against is. If you know the deck you're playing against, you're probably going to have a good idea, but there's no, well, I know this is for province strength. I have to send these, this many guys. It right. makes attacking a little bit rougher. Mm hmm. Defender gets first action, so that's the same as the old game. They said some stuff on that. I don't remember exactly what it was, though. I think they said they they tested both. Yeah, and the game favors being aggressive, so they kind of wanted to balance that out by giving the defender first action to put more risk on the attacker. So you really have to think about the resources you're committing to any battle, just like the old game. So that's just another way that it's kind of a mashing of the two. They yeah. want to keep well, some they, of the familiar stuff. They even said stuff. that they really started with the AEG game, not from scratch, but they started with that and then, you know, see what fit, see what they wanted to cut. And... Go from there. Yep. Yeah. Okay, Honored is now a spectrum, kind of like I was referring to back when I was talking about rings. So personalities are now dishonored, neutral, or honored. If you're honored and you're dishonored, you don't go straight to Dishonored. So if I have a guy who's three military skill, he's honored, he has one glory, so he's a four military skill. If he gets Dishonored, he doesn't just lose two skill and go to two. He goes back to normal state, so he's a three. I like this a lot. Yeah. It's not completely swing. If you're going to tie glory into your skill with the honor mechanic, it's too swingy if there were just t- the two states. Or if you could go from one to the spectrum to the other opposite end. Yeah. It would completely screw line, because if they're all going to be high glory, we need to honor our guys, then they're going to suffer a lot from playing against Dishonor. At the same time, Scorpion's going to suffer a little bit against people who can honor themselves. They're not going to get as good mileage, because it's going to be so swingy. Well, but I mean, that flavor-wise, that makes sense. I mean... What, like the going from one spectrum to the other? Well, well specifically that, that the Scorpion would struggle to fight somebody who is highly honorable because their whole thing is dishonoring people so if everyone is going to believe that this person is really honorable they're going to have a hard time dishonoring them like flavor just flavor wise like it makes sense that the lion would also struggle against the scorpion because okay yeah i got you i see what you're saying 
Although I do think that the Scorpio don't really have that much problems, or at least in the old story, you know, kind of uh, slandering people, getting the upper hand. Yeah. So yeah, I like that spectrum a lot. If the attacker breaks a province, you get the op- you get to choose whether you discard the card or leave it in the province. It's just a way to keep your opponent's provinces gummed up if you want. Obviously, since they keep the resource, they don't lose the extra card of production. That's kind of a way to keep it to where, oh, they don't need that other copy of um, their generic person. They need this guy, so I'm just going to leave the card there. Yeah, but the uh, broken provinces discard automatically at end of turn. Yeah, that's true. Then why would they make such yeah, a big not... mention of that? I don't know. Does it I refill mean... face up, maybe? I don't well, you've know. already bought your guys, too, by that point, by the conflicts phase. You've already I mean, purchased your guess, characters. I guess if you win, you choose to discard it, it leaves and another one comes into play, and then at end of turn, the one that was just put there would leave and come back, or, and a new one would fill. Yeah. So it's kind of like milling, I guess, a little bit, or like but you know, why would you discard, discard, but... Why would you ever choose not to, then? I don't know. Maybe there will be card effects based on stuff that's in... Certain yeah, provinces. I wouldn't be surprised if like Lion could pull from the Dynasty deck later because they seem to be pretty Dynasty deck flavored. Or if there's like reserved cards, maybe to borrow a turn mm-hmm. from the old game. So maybe yeah. I could like buy a guy out of my province in the middle of battle. Right. So maybe there'll be ways for your cards that are in your provinces to interact in the other phases of the game. I don't know. That that's the only way I could think why they would make that distinction if yeah. the guy's going to get discarded anyways. We got a new keyword for certain attachments. Uh, stuff like the fine katana has the restricted. I get. I think they call it trait, not keyword. I missed it. it. Whatever they said. Yeah, restricted is you can have no more than two of that card on one character. So I guess everyone's a kensei now. <laughs> has the possibility, at least. Yeah. If you can, or can you just keep stacking katana on your one guy? You got Zoro over here from One Piece. <laughs> yeah, he just wears his swords on his back or whatever. One in his mouth. Yep. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know. You think that they would just be like the old... Cause it, I mean, it makes sense that you can only realistically use two weapons at once at the most. Stuff like armor, obviously, you can in the old game, you could wear armor, have yeah, like a I, random odd attachment. I think it'll probably come down to a more like gameplay beats flavor in this one aspect. Yeah. yeah. I think they wanted to cut down on all the different keywords or whatever they're calling it. And generally, loading up one guy is really bad anyways. Yeah, especially since they're only going to stick around for a few turns. Yep, so there's no guarantee they're going to be there the rest of the game. Yep. Unless you invested heavily on their fate, so... I don't know. And then they get pacified. <laughs> yep, exactly. And they just fade out of existence. Alright, we got spells now. We saw our uh, first spell card in action, uh, which was Cloud the Mind. It was an air spell for one fate that you attach to one of your opponent's characters. Play only if you have a Shugenja, so obviously still you have to have your Shugenja to use spells. Treat the character that it's attached to as if it's a print text box or blank, except for its traits. So this is where I gather they are probably calling traits, or what were keywords mm-hmm. traits now. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, neat little spell. Spells are still attachments. They're mm-hmm. not uh, just actions you play, which is what I was, I was thinking that they might do with the game. You defecting over to Phoenix it means you'll see a lot of them. <laughs> we haven't made that decision yet, Mal. <laughs> We're just heavily leaning in that direction. I'll reserve my judgment to pick after I've seen all the cards, sir. Nope, you gotta pick now. Oh, okay. Well, crap. I'm screwed. <laughs> I mean, that's that's basically kind of all the, the meat that we got out of the article. Other than that, it was a sample of battle. I encourage you to go read it and check it out if you want to see how it works. feels very ivory to me, where it's obviously not these big, swingy effects for the most part. It's a little, you know, I give my guy some force. I'm, you bow my character. I do this back and forth. And it was cool to see the, the Phoenix and Dragon interact in the battle, because I think they're two of the most flavorful clans we've seen so far mechanically. So, yeah, I agree. So it's cool to see them them fight against each other. Did you guys have any favorite cards you saw out of the new article that you really liked? Uh, nothing super stood out, but again, it was mostly Dragon and Phoenix, so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have to echo that sentiment. One card that looks really powerful is Bonsai. Maybe that's oh, yeah. why they added, or they made that the name of the article. Right. It's a zero cost, or zero fate cost, 
As an action during a conflict, you choose a participating character. The character gets plus two military strength until the end of the conflict. You may lose one honor to resolve this ability twice. That's super yeah. powerful and basically what won the dragon player of the conflict in the game. Right. Just want to say Seems that. Pretty good for maybe crab. It's neutral. It's going to be played in every deck that cares about military. I guarantee it. Right. Not yeah. in honor. I bet honor decks will still play it too. Yeah. It's only like, one honor. Be that powerful. True. It's, I was going to say, yeah, you'll have a, lo a large pool of honor from which to draw from and depower it. Maybe so. not Crane and Phoenix if they don't... Crane Scorpion, I mean, if they don't have as many uh, military-based personalities, but who knows? there could be a political version of it, too. You never know. Yeah. Yeah, so that card stood out to me a lot. Also, just really like Sheba Peacemaker. The Defender guy? Yeah. 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 He's a one cost, one fate cost, four military, one political, Bushi, as one glory. Character cannot participate in conflicts as an attacker. You know what he screams to me? Defensive dueling. <laughs> Mil the, he's got that four military strength. It's the perfect bully dealer. Pick on them cranes. Who's better, Kakido or uh, Miramoto? Nope, it's Shiba. Shiba. Yeah. It's I mean, if you're rank five, right? <laughs> it makes sense in the... An RPG too, kind of honestly. Right. Well, yeah, I I rank five Shiva wreck. Yeah. Also, just something that I noticed, and this is also just good design, I think, especially compared to the old game. So when we get these honor versus honor, or honor versus dishonor, or dishonor versus dishonor mirrors and stuff like that. Now that the game is interactive, because they basically said, you know, if you want to win honor. You can't completely ignore going to battles. You can't just always stay at home. You're going to have to do some stuff at the battlefield. Or else it's going to be really hard to get to 25 or to get your opponent to zero. Right? Yep. In the old game, if it was honor versus dishonor, the games all, almost always went to time. It was very just, you know, I'm hovering around five or something. You get me yeah. down like 10 honor, I get back up like 10 more. And then you we have to like roll... Yeah, you won't have to necessarily be breaking provinces, but you're probably going to want to be claiming rings. Yeah, and you're going to want to be fighting each other. I mean, breaking provinces is going to be some a viable strategy. Like, if you obviously yeah. have more strength on your uh, personalities versus the guy you're playing against, it's probably what you're going to want to do, especially yeah. in mirrors, honestly. Because, I mean, if you can break all four of their provinces, then there you go. Sometimes that's what you had to do in the old game. Like, there was a time <laughs> where I did... I was playing against Phoenix Dishonor... And Ivory won. I was playing Crane Wingy Courtier's Honor, and I won military. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so sometimes you had to do it, and this game obviously encourages you to do it more because you don't right. lose all your guys necessarily. It's not com as completely swingy. The spectrum's a lot smaller, 0 to 25, and you get the rings. So just getting the air ring is going to be a big thing for those matchups. Yeah. I'm the excited. The more I see, the more I like. Yep, I, I'm the same way, man. I, I just want to see some more of the cards. I want all the cards <laughs> in my hand now. I want to play with the game. Stop making yeah, me like Phoenix. Just release FFG. it now. <laughs> so yeah, that's all the L5R news. Looking forward to the fiction next week. I I wouldn't be surprised if it is crane related though. Yeah, especially if they're going to talk crane fairly soon. So maybe we'll get something about Hodoru. Yeah, actually, that might be a good point to why they're starting since. She's obviously one of the biggest changes. Yeah. Uh, one of the big yeah. new characters. So, right. Makes so. sense. Actually, I did. Um, this was funny. Totally tangential side story. I was playing on PS4 the other night, and I saw a person running or on Destiny on PS4, and I saw a guy running around by the name of Doji Hattori. <laughs> wow. I've never well, ran into anyone else who's like, I a, has an like, L5R name on anything. He's obsolete. Like games, yeah. game wise. I, I did also in um, Xenoverse one time. I ran into a Bayushi, but and he was like in red and black colors, and I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, but specifically the fact that that he was Doji Hotaru was just like, "Okay." Yeah, that's crazy. There we go. <laughs> hmm. 